The Lusk Tidy Towns Committee wish to thank Trevor Sargent, TD, leader of the Green Party, who has kindly agreed to give a talk on the importance of hedgerows and the flora and fauna in Fingal. We hope to produce a series of DVDs on local environmental matters for our national schools in the future. We just get the first few shovels in around so that the roots are in contact and there aren't any air pockets. Right. Now the important thing is to also is firm it down because although it's look nice and calm here this morning, when the winds get going and it starts rocking around, the roots will take fright. To grow. Very easy to grow. Well here we are at Joe's Bridge just on the Skerries Road outside Lusk and over two years ago, you may recall, we planted this beautiful willow tree and it's coming on and it's in leaf and it's going to be a fine tree when it gets to its full size. But because we're talking about hedgerows today, it's also very important that we see this willow as part of a long tradition of managing hedgerows because a hedgerow will continue to grow up and up, but to keep it fit for keeping stock and animals in fields, it has to be laid uh, so that all the gaps are closed off. And the willow and those beautiful bendy branches are used in hedge laying so that you can put a stake in, you can wrap around the hedge uh, and you can use these bendy branches of the willow to keep the hedge in place so that it is good for farming and keeps the, the animals from wandering and get, getting through the hedge. And so this willow is not just a thing of beauty, something that has been used for centuries as well for making cricket bats for example in North County Dublin but it's also important in farming for managing hedgerows. Well here we are in Hedgestown in Lusk and as you can see behind a beautiful display of what we call gorse or whin or furze or in Irish atchen. This plant is so famous that it has so many names used in different languages and we use them all in Ireland one way or the other. Uh, the Norse called this beautiful yellow flowered bush uh, whin. The Angles and the Saxons uh, call it gorse or furs. And in Ireland we have two types. We have the Achen Gaelach and the Achen Francoch. And they are uh, behind us here, in, interspersed with the Skiach Gyal or the White Thorn as well. But apart from being a hedging plant, probably nowadays this is most famous for its beautiful yellow flower, but also for the beautiful aroma, a kind of almond nutty smell that people, um, and I, I certainly know people who love to have it uh, close by because of that beautiful smell. And there's a legend behind that too, which I think is beautiful. The fairies Baking their cakes is what our, our people think of when they smell that beautiful flower. And the reason why it's associated with the, the yachin or the gorse is because inside the gorse bushes, the fairies got protection because of the, the, the spiky um, spines on the gorse. And the elves couldn't get those lovely cakes that the fairies were baking. So it is protected. Um, uh, uh, Protected fairy cakes are in those gorse bushes because of that flower. And it also makes a beautiful wine uh, and has other uses as well. But for, for, for us, it is part of the tradition of hedges in this country. And we are here in Hedges Town, which makes it particularly appropriate. Well here we are in Fingal, looking north, Dundalk Bay and the mountains of Morn beyond are in the distance. But as you can see here, hedgerows are a vital part of the landscape and they mark out Fingal as a place where hedgerows have been not just protecting wildlife and, and uh, ensuring that we have a diverse environment, but also determining their townlands. 
we have Walchestown, Hedgestown, Richardstown, and in Irish, going back into uh, history, we have Ballybockle, Ballybockle, and Baldungan, and Ballonridera. All of those names with Ballya or town indicate that townlands which were determined by the hedgerows are what we're talking about. And those hedgerows then are part of our history, but they're also part of the present where they protect wildlife, the butterflies get shelter, the insects, the birds and the animals and the flora and fauna in general. And that is why they need protection. And those hedgerows, which are a lot less than they were there years ago, I might add, because fields have got bigger and there are less hedgerows as a result, but they are protected from the beginning, the 1st of April, to the end of August. And that's to allow the birds to nest safely without the possibility of a machine coming along and cutting the hedge uh, uh, while they're trying to nest. So if you see any hedge cutting going on during that time, I ask you to please report it. And the, the reporting of it means that I or another public representative can require of the Minister for the Environment to check that that hedge cutting uh, if it was legally happening, in other words, if the county council was cutting, they have to have a good reason. In other words, they have to say that it was because of safety reasons that they were cutting because the hedge was growing out and people couldn't see uh, around a corner if they were driving, for example. But other than that, it's illegal to cut the hedges from the beginning of April to the end of August. And that is to protect the importance of those hedgerows. Well, here we are in the Nevis area of Lusk. We've got a beautiful hedgerow behind us here. Of course, it's important also to bear in mind that this hedgerow is not needed to keep stock or keep cattle in, as it's, it's in tillage. So we have a different type of hedgerow if you need to keep stock in and prevent cattle from wandering and so forth. Uh, and that means that you have to have the hedge without any holes or gaps in it. And that's where hedge laying comes in. And that's a very old tradition in Fingal and throughout Ireland with these type of tools like the, the slash hook and the bow saw and the, 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 the hatchet and hammer for hammering in posts uh, and weaving uh, the, the hedge uh, together so that all the gaps are closed off. And you also have to not have too many trees growing up, for example, because once a tree grows up, it shades the hedge and then the hedge isn't thriving as much and therefore gaps tend to develop. Um, but in this case, we have the opportunity of encouraging a hedge like this for wildlife because you'll have more diversity, particularly if the trees are allowed to grow up and the birds then, if the hedge is taller, uh, up to over two meters, uh, you'll get the dunnock nesting and the blackbird and the song thrush and the wren and uh, the other birds of the hedgerow thrive in this type of environment. And of course, the taller trees then provide nesting places for larger birds. Uh, and overall, we get a good environment for wildlife, flora and fauna uh, in a hedge like this, because it's no longer required to keep stock in. And of course, the plant life is not just interesting on its own account, but because it is interesting from the point of view of what plants can be used for. We have a lot of food plants, for example. Um, many of us have great memories of collecting blackberries in the autumn time. And of course, you have other plants that are not maybe known so much for their uses, like yarrow. Uh, yarrow is an old medicinal herb in Irish, on Tahir Talun, the father of the land. And that is referring, ref, reference to its old wisdom and the old medicinal uses that yarrow was put to. And also medicinal is, for example, uh, the, the Merachon Puki, uh, the foxglove. And in English that translates as the finger gloves of the fairies. And you can imagine that when you see a foxglove in, in bloom a little later in the year, where, where you see those little flowers that look like finger gloves. Uh, and that plant, of course, is also used in medicine. Um, it is the the, the source of a, a medicine for, for heart complaints nowadays. Uh, and again, it provides useful, um, not just for, for wildlife, it, it is a favorite food plant of the bumbog, the bumblebee, 
uh, and you'll see that during the summer as well how the bumblebee goes for the foxglove another beautiful hedgerow plant so we also have i i i think again you wouldn't see this in a, a stock proof um, hedge but you would see bindweed uh, in a hedge that is um, encouraging diversity and the irish for the bindweed i love it's the elus foil the shoelace of the hedge and as we all know the bindweed goes through a hedge very very quickly it's a very aggressive uh, little plant but it, it also provides um, the, the, the food for the insects and the insects in turn provide food for the, uh, the birds and the mammals and uh, there, therein lies the beauty and the rich ecosystem of a hedgerow. And of course, some of the richness of the wildlife in a hedgerow includes the small animals. Now, we don't often see the small animals because they're mainly active at night time. But if we were here long enough, and indeed quiet enough, we would, um, from time to time, see uh, the larger animals, such as the fox and the, the badger, but also in the hedgerow itself, the small field mouse and the vole, and indeed, my favorite of them all, the hedgehog on Grán Yog, as we say in Irish. And the hedgehog is a threatened animal in Ireland and in England because hedgerows are, are disappearing um, and we have to try and protect them and encourage more people to grow hedgerows. Uh, but the hedgehog also goes onto the road uh, looking for food and if a car comes along, it curls up in a ball and therefore is, is squashed, it won't run away. And so the hedgehog, has a problem not just with the cars on the road and the lack of hedgerow, hedgerows uh, but the hedgehog also has problems with litter and that's where I think if we go to the hedge the hedgerow take a look at the litter and we'll see just how much that is a problem not just for us to have to have to look at it but the actual wildlife it's, it is fatal for some animals. Well, here's litter that we find all too often along our hedgerows and not just on the roadside, but anywhere people have been careless enough to throw it. And the hedgehog, for example, will come along with its spikes, of course, which act like a kind of a barb and it's looking for food. It sniffs into an old coffee polystyrene cup like this. And once it sniffs its snout in there, it cannot get it out because it is like a barb, as I say, like a fishing line, a fishing hook. Um, and, and that means that the hedgehog effectively can't see where it's going, can't feed, and eventually starves to death. Um, and all for the sake of a careless discarding of a piece of rubbish that should go in a litter bin. And other types of litter cause problems too. For example, here we have uh, a can, and when it's been opened and drunk, and somebody carelessly disposes of it, um, a bird. Um, we've seen the injured birds, um, maybe pigeon or seagull or a crow or whatever, it's rummaging for food, leg goes in there, cannot get out, and it has an agonizing, agonizing time as the metal wears away uh, at, the, at the leg. And, and eventually um, either it dies or it becomes severely mutilated. Uh, all for the sake of carelessness. And again, the same goes, there's a can and the jagged edge of the can, again, the hedgehog um, would put its snout in there and couldn't get it out. And again, would have a very slow, slow death. Um, bottles of one type or another, again, an animal will sniff around, go into it, not be able to get out. And, and thereby, because of carelessness and littering, uh, animals are seriously affected and, and quite often die. And that is another reason why we should be very serious about stopping and avoiding littering. Well, these hedgerows in Fingal are depending on you and me for their protection. And they are also not just a habitat for wildlife and a protection for farmers to keep animals in or out, but they are also an inspiration. And poets like William Wordsworth, the famous poet from the Lakelands in England, put it very well when he said, these hedgerows, hardly hedgerows, 
little lines of sportive wood run wild. And that's what they are here. And they are for you and me an important part of our heritage, which we hopefully will be able to hand on in a healthy state for generations to come. And we also want to go on and look at other parts of Fingal's wildlife and heritage, such as the rivers and the trees. And we'll be doing that in the next section.